Hey, welcome back to Better Done Yourself. Today on Better Done Yourself, I want to make Italian giardinera. Italian giardinera is, well, a giardinera means in Italian, from the garden. So basically it's just a, it's a medley of garden vegetables that, you know, you might have gotten some, you might be familiar with these, I think you know what I'm talking about. If um, you go to an Italian restaurant, you order the antipasto platter, and you get like some little kind of rolled up pieces of meat and some of those little pickled vegetables, that's what we're making. That kind of pickled, um, eh, well, what you're eating there is probably made with vinegar, where they just cut the vegetables up, soak them in vinegar. I'm gonna turn that. I'm gonna take my giardinera and ferment it and make something that's actually good for me, something that's got a lot of probiotics in it, something that's you know really preserving the, the nutrition in the vegetables. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the vegetables up, stack them in this. This is new, Kilner just sent me this. This is awesome. This is the Kilner fermenting set. What Kilner's done is provided a three liter, three quarter, you know, a three quarter of a gallon jar, nice heavy duty vessel, and fitted it with a silicone cap and an airlock, and I'll show you how all this works in a little bit. Provided a couple of little weights, so that what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop all our vegetables, put them in the jar, fill this up with salt water, weight them down with the ceramic weights, fill the airlock, and create an environment that will foster the good bacteria that's on the vegetables. All these vegetables have a little bit of bacteria on them. I mean, unless you really cook them or, or sanitize them in, you know, with whatever, high heat and chemicals, they've got probiotics on them. I want to harness those, those good bacteria and use them to ferment the vegetables. That is to take these vegetables and allow them to sort of rot, but not rot in the traditional sense, not rot with all kinds of bacteria that's gonna make them into compost. I'm gonna make a delicious appetizer with them. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna fill my jar and then cover them with brine, cover them with salt water the probiotic bacteria, the lactic acid bacteria that we're gonna to use to make our lactic acid ferment, don't mind the salt. Everything else, everything else that makes your veggies go bad in the fridge, everything that, you know, you pull something out of the back of the fridge and it's covered with mold, it's covered with you know, uh, slimy and gross and mushy, all of those bacteria can't stand the salt water and they need oxygen. So by covering your veggies with salt water and then just letting them sit out at room temperature for a couple of days, you get something really nutritious, probably even more nutritious than the original vegetables. And you also get that, that, that lactic acid breaks down the carbohydrates in the vegetables and creates lactic acid and pickles the vegetables. So you're kind of doing a lot of things at once. And it's a great technique to make really delicious foods really simply in the kitchen. And if you can find something cool, like a Kilner jar to ferment them in, it really, it comes out really nice. So, without too much more talking, let's, let's get these vegetables cut up. So what I like to do is just, you know, make, like I said, my little snack size of everything. We'll probably just do some little discs of carrots here. I like to just peel the, peel the carrots. When you make something like this, think about the finished product. You think about what you're gonna end up with. I'm aiming for, like I said, that little tray of, of assorted pickled vegetables that they, that they put on my table in the Italian restaurant. So I wanna make them look pretty. I, this is you know, something I'm gonna put out for my guests when I'm having friends over for dinner, and I want this to look nice. So spend a little bit of time and, and you know, prep the vegetables, peel, the tri peel and trim the carrots, so we're just going to make our little snack sizes of everything here. And, well, just like you're making a salad, essentially. I mean, I'm doing kind of large pieces of, of all my salad ingredients. So, cut your vegetables up, and then we're just going to fill this jar with all these beautiful vegetables. Another very popular ingredient in traditional uh, giardinera is um, pepperoncini peppers. Pepperoncini peppers are like basically impossible to find. I'm not going to suggest that you go looking for them. Um, if you can find them, have more power to you. But I, I, I search high and low. I've been to every store I can think of in the area. I cannot find fresh pepperoncini. So someone did hand me these though. These are uh, shishito peppers. 
I like to use these. These are probably as close a pepper. You know, they're not real hot. They've got a little bit of heat, so they give you a little bit of flavor. Um, throw a couple of these in there. Depends on, on how spicy you like it. Uh, these I just picked up at the farmer's market. I think they were a dollar for this bag of them. Other uh, ingredients, cauliflower. I'm just gonna do probably, I don't know, half a head of cauliflower. And then cut the big central core out of there. And then just do our little snack sizes of each of these florets. So, you know, just bite size. I don't want this big core in there. Probably never ferment. Might ferment in about six months, I'll be able to eat it. But like I said, you know, we might be eating this in three or four days. So if we can get kind of all of these open surfaces, these are going to allow the brine and the bacteria to get into this. So we're just doing our little, our little bite-sized florets. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not cutting all the way through. I like to make them pretty. Just cut through the thick stem and then break the cauliflower so it naturally keeps these, these blossoms, if you want to call them that, keeps the, the flowers of the florets intact. So we just cut through the stem and then pop them apart. Next, on the block, uh, sweet pepper, uh, bell pepper. You can use green. I like the, the red and the yellow and the orange ones better. These are actually ripe. <laughs> green peppers are not ripe which is why if you taste them, they're kind of bitter. Next time you're in the supermarket, if you're a green pepper kind of person, grab a, one of the ripe ones and, and take it home and spring it on your family. I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised how much better these taste. Not anything bad about green peppers, but I'm just saying, make sure that you, you know what's available to you out there. So again, we're thinking about our, our final product here. So we're core it and then we're just gonna make these little these little julienne strips. These go right in. I like to cut the white ribs out. I think these are really bitter. You know, in hot peppers, this is where the heat is. In bell peppers, there's that same spiciness, but it's not hot, it's, it's actually bitter. So I like to just go and make my little julienne strips. Cut the, the rib out when you get to it. Make sure they're reasonably sized. Maybe, you know what? Let's do, I said these are supposed to be bite-sized. I'm thinking these aren't bite-sized. I think probably half-sized Julian strips. Let's get those in there. What's left? Um, onions and celery, and I think we've pretty much got a jar full here. I'll probably use about half of this onion. I think, not, not because of the flavor of the onion, but just for space requirements, for one, and um, I'm running out of room. A little overzealous in my vegetable selections here, but I think maybe we'll just do some kind of larger squares of onion. So, I don't know, are these bite size? These look good. Break them up. Get them in the jar fast before you start to cry. Don't get the juice in your eyes. And then, um, lastly, I just want to do a little bit of celery. So we'll do, not really slices, but we kind of go in the, our little bite size routine here. So, I don't know, these are probably an inch long. I've got three stalks going in. Trim the, trim the ends. A little bit of celery. Now, let's, let's talk about what we need to get this to ferment properly. What I want to do is ferment this in a 2% brine solution. Now, when I say 2% brine solution, I'm talking about the entire volume of this jar because the brine, when we put it in here, is going to do some osmotic reaction processing on our vegetables. And the brine's gonna move in and out of the, the vegetables, literally um, kind of diluting the, the water, the brine that we pour in, and the salt's gonna get into the vegetables. So we wanna end up with 
a jar full of vegetables that are 2% brine and water that's 2% brine. So there's a trick. It's not hard, bear with me. So now to get this to work properly, what I want to do is fill this, like I said, with about a 2% brine solution. Now, the, the water itself is, is going to hold all the salt initially, and what we need to do is figure out how much So now to get this to ferment properly, we're going to have to fill this with, make this be a vegetables and 2% brine. In order to get that, we need to figure out how much water it would take to fill this jar up and then add the salt to that water. So let's just fill our Kilner jar up with fresh water. Don't use chlorinated water. Use, if you have to, buy a jug of spring water. But this, this is my, I have a well, so I don't, there's no chlorine in my water. A lot of places put a lot of chlorine in the water. If you've got chlorine, you'll know it. It smells like pool water. You really need fresh water. So fill this up with spring water, well water, dechlorinated water. Uh, I've seen people that have a chlorine problem and they actually put some lemon into it and just let it sit out overnight and that helps the chlorine to dissipate. But that chlorine, you know, the, the city puts the chlorine in the water to kill the bacteria. What are we doing? We're trying to foster bacteria. So that chlorine in the water is really not going to work for us. But all right, we've got our water volume. Now, let's just hold all this down. We serve that water. Now to this much water, I'm going to add 60 grams of salt. Yeah, or if you like, this is, this is actually a quarter cup. If you don't want to do all of this, generally you can kind of see where we are. We're at about a uh, quart and a half and our uh, quarter of a cup of salt. So now we've got our, our volume of water in here. We'll give this a good stir, get our salt dissolved. The other thing you want to think about when you're mixing up your brine is, now do you want to add some flavoring to this? Do you want? We could do, I like to do a couple of bay leaves. They, uh, bay leaves give the, the jardinera a nice taste. Just tuck these right down in here. And another thing the bay leaves do is they have a lot of tannins in them. The tannins will actually preserve the pectin in the vegetables. Now the pectin is a is what the cell walls are made out of. So if we have, you know, that kind of, think of like a, a sponge all made out of pectin. That's the, the cell walls of the vegetables. The salt prevents the, the bacteria from breaking down those, those pectin and it keeps the vegetables crunchy. So the combination of the salt and like I said, the, the tannins and the bay leaves really do a nice job of protecting the, the pectins and, and you'll get a nice crunchy end result. Other things you can add, I like to do um, some black peppercorns. I've got uh, a teaspoon probably, I don't know, like 20 peppercorns. Maybe some mustard seed is, is nice if you're into that. Um, I put the shishito peppers in. If Maybe you've used alapanos, which would be delish. Um, if you feel like, you know, I really want a little bit more heat, maybe just some a little bit of uh, pepper flake. And pepper flake's fun too, because it's red and it's pretty. But, like I said, I don't really do a lot of spicy, so I think the shishitos would be good for me. I think that's going to work great. Now, remember a minute ago when we poured the water in and how all the vegetables floated up? That's not going to work in our ferment. So, Kilner has a great solution. What they've done is provided these little ceramic weights. They probably weigh oh, probably four or five ounces each. And made them so they can make a little lid on top of your vegetables. But this, it wouldn't fit, so they split them and then you can kind of put each half in side by side and if you've got the vegetables right up to where I've got them here you'll see that they fit in there just about perfectly so we've got our spices, we've got our bay leaves, we've got our salt we're just about done here I think we can fill up our kilner jar one last time Attach our silicone lid. What do we got going here? This is basically an airlock, which is there's a tube going right through it, 
and the air comes out through the tube, this is a little cap. What we're going to do is we'll add a little bit of our brine and we'll make kind of a well there. When you drop the cap in, now the air can go up the tube and the, you'll see the cap moving around, you'll see little bubbles coming out, but oxygen can't get back in to our fermenting jar and cause problems. So we'll put that in place, pop the top on, and this is ready. I'm just going to let this sit, like I said, for a couple of days before I give it my first taste. And then every couple of days I'll taste one and see, does it taste like a, a salty vegetable or does it taste like a yummy fermented uh, jardinera piece? And then once I feel like, you know, I, I, I taste a piece on, you know, a couple of days from now and it's got that, uh, just the right amount of lactic acid, it's got the right amount of zing to it, then, you know, I can take this off, I can take the weights out and take this whole thing and just put it in the fridge. The, it will continue to ferment, but very slowly because it's cold in the refrigerator and so it'll ferment a little bit more, but it's not going to, you know, be full on fermenting. So once you, you know, taste it, once you get it so you like it, pop it in the fridge and enjoy it with your friends. And know that you're eating super nutritious vegetables. Know that you've got some great probiotics growing in here. And you've got a real pretty jar to put out uh, compliments of Kilner. Thanks everybody for watching, you guys. If you have any questions about anything in this process, if you want to pick one of these up, click the links down below. It helps me. I get a, I get a little bit of a commission from the Amazon company when you buy stuff on Amazon. If you follow one of my links before you go to Amazon. And ask any questions you have, just you know, leave a comment below. I always you know, answer my, my questions really quickly. So if you have any questions about the process, be sure to leave a comment below. And uh, enjoy fermenting, guys. See you next time.